This next section will talk about radial symmetry and Lophotrochozoa. Starting with the phylum Periphera, the sponges. So key features of sponges is that they have porous bodies with no tissues. Sponges lack differential tissues and there's a wide diversity of sponges. As far as anatomy goes, water and wastes go in and out the same end. The phylum Snideria includes jellyfish, hydra, coral, and sea anemones. Here you can see the um, radial symmetry and they have two germ layers. They also have stinging cells. The Snyderians are extremely diverse. So here you can see a picture of a jellyfish, hydra, coral of all different types, and sea anemones. So this is a basic diagram of the anatomy. So you have the epidermis, which is on the outside, then you have tentacles, and then there's a mouth part with a gastrovascular cavity, and there's a foot. Cnidarians reproduce sexually and asexually, so they have the ability to do t both types of reproduction. And here's their life cycle. We'll go through this a little bit. So here's a female and here's a male. They're going to produce separate gametes. So the sperm cells combine with the eggs to form the zygote. And then there's this larva stage. The larva will divide by mitosis and turn into this polyp. And eventually um, these little mud buds will form. And by asexual reproduction, it will release new medusa. And then these medusa are going to be uh, floating around in the environment. The phylum platyhelminthes, the flatworms, includes planarians, flukes, and tapeworms. Many flukes and tapeworms are parasites to people and animals. So key, featured, key features here are flattened body with no coelom. Diversity, so here's the diversity of some of the flatworms. So here's a fluke, a planarian, here's a marine flatworm, and then here's a tapeworm. So anatomy, the digestive system, they have a gut, and then they have this um, pharynx, which is a throat and a mouth part. They have eye spots, which make up their nervous system. They have a brain, and then they have these nerves. Some flatworms are parasitic, such as the blood fluke. They reproduce in the human intestine. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the blood fluke here. So the fluke infects the human through the skin. So the larvae has the ability to migrate through the human skin while they're standing or working in snail infested water. The fluke is going to migrate into veins surrounding the intestines or bladder and then develop into an adult fluke. They're going to start passing eggs and the person will start either shedding those eggs in their feces or in their urine. The eggs are going to get into the environment, probably back in that natural body of water, where they're going to hatch and turn into larvae. The larvae infect snails at that point and they will um, kind of grow inside of the snail for a period of time and then eventually they'll pass out of the snail leaving the intermediate host which is the snail and going on to infect the next person. The phylum mollusca includes snails, scallops, and squids. 
Key features of mollusks include a mantle, a muscular foot, and a visceral mass. Mollusks are extremely diverse. So here is the chitin, the scallop, the snail, slug, octopus, and squid. The basic anatomy is much more complex. So at one end you have a mouth. And here you can see the digestive tract is going to go up from the mouth and it goes all the way through to the end to the anus. There's a mantle in here. There's a heart with kind of primitive vascularity. There's a foot that allows this organism to move. There's a gill that aids in respiration and that gill is attached to the anus. There's an excretory system, so kind of like a mini urinary system. There's a coelom, a reproductive organ, and then there's some muscular tissue that you can see coming down from here. And then there's a nerve collar that allows them to feel sensation. The phylum Annelida includes earthworms, leeches, and polychaetes. Key features include segmentation. They also have bilateral symmetry and three germ layers, and they're protostomes. So this is a picture of the earthworm, the leech, and the polychaete. Basic anatomy, so they have a saddle-like thickening in the center here. They have a pharynx, so the mouth, the throat, which is the pharynx, an esophagus, which leads down into the digestive tract. They have a coelom. They have a brain and nervous tissue that turns into like the ventral nerve cord. They have these aortic arches and that allows them to circulate blood. They have an excretory organ, which kind of serves as a kind of primitive urinary system and um, the end has an anus where they can eliminate wastes.